Hi, I'm Chao Wei Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and the Frederick Health Hospital. Today we're going to talk about an easy technique uh, to reliably nail the osteum with your stent and without using contrast. The patient is a 60-year-old woman with diabetes who presented with a non-STEMI. Her uh, ejection fraction was normal uh, with maybe a hint of inferior hypokinesis. On cath, her LED and circumflex had uh, typical uh, diabetic appearance. Um, there was diffuse disease, but nothing severe enough to warrant a uh, cabbage referral. The RCA is shown, and you see the obvious culprit. Uh, the RCA is fairly small, uh, but there is a critical stenosis uh, right in the mid-RCA. So uh, this looks straightforward. Uh, I uh, wired the lesion with a workhorse wire, uh, pre-dilated with a 2.25-millimeter uh, balloon, uh, stented uh, with two overlapping stents, and post-dilated uh, with 2.5 and 2.75-millimeter uh, NC balloons. And um, I was reasonably happy uh, with the uh, initial angiographic result. The mid-RC, it looked pretty good. Um, but there is one red flag you see on this angio. Um, there was no uh, contrast reflux uh, from the osteum of the RCA. Uh, you can see the lack of reflux a bit better from this view. So uh, what's the uh, differential here? Well, first, uh, it could be that the RCA is just a small vessel that barely accommodates the guide catheter. Second, uh, it could be that there is uh, osteal uh, vasospasm. And third, um, there might be an osteal stenosis that perhaps we just didn't uh, really appreciate very well at first. Now, um, when there is no reflux, um, you have to be careful about causing a dissection uh, from your contrast injections. In fact, a sign of an uh, osteal dissection can sometimes be a new uh, lack of reflux, uh, with the dissection flap essentially causing a, a new osteostenosis. Um, you'll notice that I actually had the foresight uh, to use a side hole catheter here because I thought that the vessel was a little small. Um, Side hole catheters are somewhat protective because the side holes can pop off uh, some of the pressure of the contrast injections, but it can give you a false sense of uh, security. And in fact, that is exactly what happened here. Now, on the next floral, which I unfortunately don't have saved, uh, we noticed a small dissection uh, right at the tip of the guide in the proximal RCA uh, close to the ostium. So um, I needed to stent the osteum uh, to uh, close up the dissection. And as we all know, uh, precisely placing a stent at the osteum is a little tricky. And often you are injecting contrast in different views uh, to find the osteum. Um, but when you have a dissection, it's actually important to minimize contrast injection since more injections can worsen the dissection. So how do you nail the osteum without using contrast? Well, um, enter the floating wire technique. This technique allows you to nail the osteum without contrast. I'll go over the details uh, uh, in a little bit, but uh, what I did here was to advance a pro water as a floating wire well out into the aorta. This pro water is more than just a marker for the osteum. Uh, with the pro water and the aorta, you can wedge the tip of your guide right against the coronary artery without actually cannulating it. By then aligning the stent with the tip of the guide, you almost always nail the osteum with just one cell protruding into the aorta. That is the ideal case. Uh, for uh, larger coronary arteries, you actually might need two floating wires to prevent the guide from uh, partially cannulating uh, the coronary. So um, here we are after stenting and flaring the proximal edge of the stent. Um, there is no residual dissection. And notice that we now have normal reflux of contrast uh, into the uh, aorta again. Um, we uh, did IVIS. Um, there is actually quite a bit of plaque there and still some room for a post dilating. But as you'll notice, the osteum is fully covered and there is only one stent cell uh, protruding uh, into the aorta. And um, here is the uh, final angiographic result after uh, most more uh, post dilating, and it looks quite satisfactory. Uh, the patient uh, did well, and uh, she went home the next day. All right, so the uh, floating wire technique, uh, sometimes also called the CPOL technique, uh, gives you a very systematic way of finding the osteum uh, without needing to do a lot of contrast injections and end up having to guesstimate anyway. 
Uh, it's very reliable and uh, there is little risk uh, that you will miss the Ostia. Uh, it doesn't require anything more than a six French guide and an extra wire. And importantly, it is very fast and easy and hence I am a fan. Uh, so this is how it's done. Uh, in step one, uh, you wire uh, your vessel with the working wire, such as a BMW, and pre-dilate uh, pre the lesion as usual. In step two, you uh, slightly disengage the guide and pass a second wire well out into the aorta. I usually use another workhorse wire, such as a pro water. Um, this second wire is the floating wire, and its main job is to keep the guide from actually cannulating the vessel, in this case, the RCA. Now, uh, very importantly, uh, make sure that the floppy part of the floating wire is well away from the vessel. Uh, this is because the floppy part of the wire is usually not stiff enough uh, to prevent the guide from entering the vessel, which is the whole point of having the floating wire in the first place. Only the more proximal uh, non-floppy part of the wire is stiff enough to do that. Uh, with larger coronary arteries, uh, you might actually need uh, two floating wires. Uh, step three, uh, advance your stent well into the vessel, uh, well beyond the ostium. Uh, step four, uh, loosen your TUI and advance your guide forward over both the floating wire and the stent delivery catheter. Keep advancing the guide until it stops advancing. Uh, the floating wire will stop the guide right at the ostium. And then keep maintaining forward pressure on the guide and back tension on the stent and the working wire. Step five, and this is the key step uh, for this technique. Pull the stent back as you're applying forward pressure on the guide and align the proximal dot of the stent with the tip of the guide. Pulling the stent back will suck the guide in as it usually, usually does, especially if you're keeping forward pressure on the guide. Uh, but the floating wire will mechanically stop the guide right at the ostium and prevent the guide from actually entering the vessel. And this is a key step for this technique and where it could actually go wrong, because if the guide is not pushed well against the ostium, you could end up hanging a lot of the stent out into the aorta. Um, after you're satisfied that your guide is well pushed against the ostium of the blood vessel and the dot of the stent is aligned with the tip of the guide, uh, you go ahead and deploy the stent. And um, as per uh, usual routine, you post dilate and then flare the proximal edge of the stent at high pressure. IVIS is then often helpful uh, to make sure that things look good. A uh, slight variation of the same technique can also be used to stent a side branch ostia, uh, usually um, a, a more proximal diagonal or a more proximal OM. Now, in this variation, you use a guide liner. Uh, the main branch and side branches are, are wired with the main branch uh, wire here acting as the quote floating wire. Uh, with your guide liner placed over both wires, uh, advance your stent into the side branch and advance your guide liner all the way in until it is stopped by the main branch wire uh, at the side branch bifurcation. Uh, once that happens, uh, pull the stent back to the tip of the guide liner while applying gentle forward pressure on the guide liner and then deploy the stent. Uh, this uh, usually only works uh, with smaller stents, hence uh, smaller branches. Um, I found that it's usually tough to get a larger stent to fit in a guide liner with a wire next to it. So the technique doesn't usually work uh, for the LED circumflex bifurcation. All right, uh, take home messages. Uh, the floating wire technique is a quick and fairly easy way to systematically and reliably locate the ostium of a vessel. The ostium is often a lot farther back uh, than you think. Uh, there is a very low risk of a geographic miss of the ostium, and there is no guesstimating or extra contrast injection involved. Uh, the main drawback is the possibility of actually hanging too much stent out into the aorta. So uh, remember this tip. Uh, when aligning the stent dot to the tip of the guide, it's very important to maintain forward pressure on the guide against the ostium uh, with the, uh, with the uh, floating wire in place. Uh, thank you for watching.